The obvious question, hearkening back to nine years ago, is, is why did you do it? The, you know, you ask why. Perhaps the most fundamental reason is, is the Sixth Commandment, Thou shalt not murder, also requires the means necessary to defend innocent people. And that's what I did, was uh, I used the means necessary to defend innocent people. I compare my actions in my mind to the, the shootings at the Columbine High School. Um, if I had killed one of the murderers there at the Columbine High School, people would not have objected to my actions because I would have been saving born children that were grown up. But the fact that the people I saved were, were unseen and, and the murderers that I killed were, were legalized murderers, people don't get the connection. But, but yeah, um, if someone were standing on a playground with, with, a, with a rifle shooting children on the playground, it would be your duty to come up and use the means necessary to stop him. And that's similar to what I did. I used the means necessary to, to restrain this abortionist. And I confess that the, the, the force I used was extraordinary. That was because the, the circumstances were extraordinary. Under ordinary circumstances, all, if, if a murderer is killing innocent people, for instance, on a, a school playground, all you got to do is get on the phone and, and the police will immediately come and restrain him, shoot him if necessary. But if I got on the phone and said, said that about the abortionist, they would have given me a, you know, a, a once over instead of the abortionist. So in those extraordinary uh, circumstances where the abortionists are being protected by the police, I believe that the, the force that I used was, was reasonable because if I just wounded him, it's highly probable that he would return to killing innocent children. People say, well, you acted as judge and jury and executioner, and I say, no, I wasn't acting in, in the capacity of civil justice. I was acting as an individual. And uh, others say, well, you know, you went to war against the government. Um, you, in order to do that, you had to have a civil magistrate. And I said, no, I didn't go to war against the government. I just acted as an individual. And individuals can defend their own children without the permission of the government. You know, you don't do anyone's, it's an inalienable duty to defend innocent people from being murdered. It's well known that the innocent should be defended with force. And if you believe abortionists are innocent, you should uphold the force necessary to defend them. But if you believe the unborn are innocent, you should uphold the means necessary to defend them and not their assailants. I mean, it's, it's irrational to say abortionists are murderers and then reject the means necessary to restrain them. How can you reconcile being a Christian and being pro-life with what people call two murders? Well, um, murder is unjust killing, whereas killing a murderer under many circumstances is justified. So what I, what I, I, I disagree with those who say that what I did was murder, and I say that I prevented murder. I know that you, you've stated very clearly yeah. that you are, you are not only resigned to this execution, but right. that you feel honored because of the reason for it, but is your execution, in, is it just? Is this a just action? No. Uh, they're executing me for doing a good deed, and it's a, certainly an honor for me, but it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an egregious sin for the government to put not only someone who, someone who defended innocent life to death. I mean, it would have been bad. I would have deserved to be here under these circumstances if, if I had been an abortionist or if I had even been an accessory to an abortion. But um, not only was I not denied not committed murder by abortion, but I didn't even, I'm not guilty of standing there and allowing uh, murder to take place. I actually you know, did what was necessary to protect innocent people, and it's especially egregious for the government to kill me for having done a good deed. My, my trial, you might say, was uh, a classic example of judicial tyranny. Since, since the government had legalized mass murder by legalizing abortion, they wouldn't allow me to expose abortion as murder, because this would have made them an accessory to murder. So therefore, they, they tried and convicted me without even allowing me to, to present my side of the case. They disallowed 
uh, a defense based on the humanity of the unborn. And um, therefore, I believe that uh, the, the courts were acting unjustly. You know, there are, there are legal steps that you could have taken all throughout this process right. to avoid your execution. Right. Why aren't you doing that? There are a number of reasons. When I was, uh, soon after I was first incarcerated, the government announced their intention to seek the death penalty. And uh, I, at that time, thought about and prayed about, discussed with uh, a theologian, and well, actually more than one theologian, and about what I should do. And I determined that the, the thing for me to do was not resist their efforts to kill me. I, um, to be quite honest, I mean, I, it, it seemed like a wonderful privilege to me to die for having defended innocent people. And uh, I was uh, glad to do that. And I didn't want to, uh, to offer a lot of ineffectual arguments and, and resist their efforts to kill me, lest it look like I was not willing to live up to uh, the consequences of my actions. And uh, I thought, ultimately, I decided that more people would be saved by, not, by, by my not resisting their efforts to kill me than if I were to resist their efforts. There are a lot of people trying to stop your execution, including some surprise. You have surprising allies out there. Ha are you able to access the news at all? Yes, people have, are sending me articles and, uh, and telling me about some of the developments that you're talking about? Uh, the daughter, the stepdaughter of the, of the doctor? I heard that she opposed my execution. Yes, she's actively opposing it. Right. Um, there are pro-abortion groups that are actively opposing your execution. Right. How do you, how do you feel about that? What's your reaction? Um, I think everyone's got to pursue their own calling. I don't object to people trying to uh, save my life. But I, I don't believe I'm called to, to try and do that. And so I respect their convictions, and, and, uh, and I appreciate the people who respect my <laughs> convictions. But, um, yeah, I'm, um, it, uh, it's nice to have people trying to save your life. It's encouraging. I wouldn't, wouldn't want people to, uh, to want to see me dead. Uh, my, my wife and, and children and, and immediate family, they don't want to see me dead, and, and I am very profoundly grateful for that. And uh, I consider, I thank the people who are trying to save me, even though I don't believe I'm called to the same sort of uh, uh, action. I know a lot of people have contacted you, have seen a website, but are you able to, to respond? And, and, and what has that been like, being, being in a prison for nine years with this? It's been difficult, but the Lord has been gracious. You know, every day he, he, he meets your needs, and uh, there's plenty of good aspects of being in prison. You get to, I spend a whole lot more time with the Lord in prayer and reading and, and uh, meditating and, and the opportunities to share the gospel with people around you and, and um, opportunities to write. And, and I spend a lot of my, my uh, work time working on a book and, and my writings. And I've been thankful for that opportunity. And um, so, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a good sanctifying experience for me. I wouldn't, it's been very difficult, and I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't lie to anyone and say that it's a piece of cake to, to, go on, to be on death row and be separated from your family. And, uh, you know, um, there's a lot of negative sides to it, but no question that, God uses trials to sanctify you, and I uh, wouldn't, uh, I'm thankful f for the trials. When I was first incarcerated, they allowed me to use the phone every day, and when I came here to Florida State Prison and was put on death row, immediately all telephone contact was cut. And as soon as my wife found out about that, she said that that was harder on her to find out that she couldn't talk to me over the phone anymore than when she first learned that I had shot the abortionist. Um, and it has, it's real, they, this particular situation, the way it got set up, you're very isolated. It's like you, it's very, it's, 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 visitors have to come a long way, go a lot of effort to see you. You're in a very small cell. I, 
I really uh, miss my my children very much, and I was my the, my response to that was just to try and rejoice in the Lord as much as I could. That's that's how I respond to uh, trials and difficulties. I just try to rejoice in them and embrace them. And so I've done a lot of rejoicing since <laughs> I've been in prison. You know, the bottom line is you don't need to avoid difficulties and trials and persecutions for standing for the truth, but you should embrace them because ultimately they, you know, they, it increases your joy and therefore thereby brings more glory to God. And if people realize that, they wouldn't be as afraid of to stick their neck out. Um, you know, you don't, you, you, you gain your life by losing it. That's what Jesus said. You know, if, if you, um, if you sacrifice your, if you willingly leave your wife or your children or your farm for Christ's sake, you do receive a hundred times as much in this life and in the life to come, eternal life. As your execution is, is approaching, um, how is your family dealing with this? Well, that's an extremely painful thing uh, for them. Uh, my my wife and, and three children were sitting in, in the booth right where you're sitting right now uh, yesterday uh, at, a, at about this time. And uh, we spent about two hours doing all we could to keep from just breaking down and sobbing. Uh, so it was extremely difficult, um, especially on my two two daughters, teenage daughters, and uh, so yeah, it's uh, no question about it, it's a very heart-wrenching, difficult situation. Um, we understand tomorrow you're going to be allowed that final visit. Right. What are you going to say to your family? Do, do, have you thought what about it? What am I going to say to my family during the last visit? We'll probably try and keep it light and and keep smiling and 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 not uh, say things that would evoke uh, deep emotions and tears and that kind of thing. Your execution, as you're well aware, is scheduled for six o'clock tomorrow. Right. Are you looking back and looking back and looking forward? Are you at peace right now with yourself and what you did? Oh yeah, there's no question about it. I mean, if if I had to do it again if I could if I were put in similar circumstances I would act similarly um, no I don't look back and wish I had done anything differently I look back and I and I stand amazed that God gave me the privilege of acting as I did and that what I attempted to do was accomplished as it was and so um, I, I look back and I'm thankful that the Lord gave me the opportunity to stand for this principle and to effectively use the means necessary to defend innocent people. Well, it was definitely unpleasant to have to kill and two human beings made in the image of God. It's not something that anyone should take lightly. But it was it's also a great joy and a privilege to defend <laughs> human beings that are made in the image of God and save, the, save human life. I'm hoping God will use my actions to to convict people. Um, one of the greatest ways to convict people is with the law of God. And, and that's what I did. I acted in obedience to the moral law or to the morality that requires the defense of innocent people. And I'm hoping that by living out that principle will convict people in the church for not doing so and will um, hopefully cause them to look to Christ for pardon and bring them to a point of repentance where they will unnecessarily act like I did. I don't believe everyone should act like I did. I believe that, that people should act according to their calling in life. And uh, But I believe that everyone in general should uphold the duties of morality. And one of the most important duties of morality is to defend innocent people with the means necessary. So I really believe that's one of the keys to stopping abortion is people upholding the duty to defend innocent people, including the unborn, with the means necessary. I hope that by my willingly dying for this principle that it will cause the principle to be uh, better understood. And um, I don't relish the idea of, of people using the force that I used. I would prefer that everyone just stand up and say, well, the unborn should be defended with the means necessary, and if people would do that, then 
abortion, illegal abortion would end. And uh, I would like for the people to remember me as someone who stood for an essential aspect of the gospel, that is, applying the law of God to the most common, one of the most common ways in which that law is being violated in our, in our day, that is, omitting the duty to defend born and unborn children equally. And I believe that the, uh, the proclamation of that duty is essential to convicting people of their neglect of the unborn and driving them to Christ for pardon, and driving them to repentance, and and um, which is necessary in order for for legal abortion to be stopped and for people to be to be uh, saved. Um, in other words, I, I would like people to remember me as someone who was willing to die for the the principle of defending innocent children or innocent people with the means necessary. Um, is there anything, any, any final thoughts that you would like to leave us with? Um, I've pretty much spoken my piece. <laughs> Did we give you an opportunity to do that? Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And I appreciate the, uh, the efforts of, in the work of uh, Mark of Life Dynamics. And uh, I, I pray for him and, and his ministry and appreciate it. Well, we pray that God would bless and keep you. Well, good. I appreciate it. We, we, I, I, next day or so, I'm going to need all the help I can get. I know. All right. Well, time's up. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We'll be praying for you. All right. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. stand before you right now ashamed, O oh God, that our country, that our nation, this great land of liberty, O oh God, has fallen so low that we're martyring one of your children, one of your servants, O oh God. We've been martyring our unborn brothers and sisters for 30 years, O oh God, and we don't know how to get out of it, O oh God. Provide for us a way of escape. Paul Hill is meeting his way of escape, O oh God, at the hands of, of government officials who are murdering him here today. Oh, <laughs> 